I think we've been quite clear in our communications with school uh, superintendents and heads of private schools that you know we will make recommendations based on the disease activity level um, according to the Department of Health's um, decision tree, but the final decision is up to the school administrators. I do have the authority that if something really goes sideways that we can uh, apply a health order on the school. Uh, I, I don't expect to do that. I mean, I think all the schools know what they're doing and they all seem to be doing a good job following things. But for example, if we had a huge outbreak at a school, um, you know, I do have the authority to ask them to close. Um, but in general, I think all the superintendents and heads of school know that's not an approach I like to take. I get emails that say, you know, you're not sensitive to the educational and behavioral and emotional needs of uh, my kids, you know, they're going to be harmed for the rest of their life, right? And then I get emails that say, thank you so much for keeping the schools in remote learning because I'm petrified, you know, and I'm looking at the numbers in the county and this is the right thing to do. And I get emails from teachers and staff that say, hey, I'm so worried that I'm going to get sick or I've got a health condition and I know that people with underlying health conditions are more likely to get sick and die, right? So there, it's, these are big issues and they're very important. And the challenge for us as a society in any complex decision like that is how do we balance those different needs? And it, what doesn't work is when we dig in our heels and and demand that it be a one issue problem. And I do not believe in, you know, threatening or punishing schools just because I can, you know, that just doesn't go anywhere. You know, think back to the spring. Remember Tacoma Public Schools did have cases in their schools. We worked with Superintendent Santorno and Josh Garcia. We did close some schools, but I did not do any health orders. Okay, we told them what we recommended, what the Department of Health was recommending. They worked with us on it. You know, we got, we got it taken care of, okay? That's how we prefer to work. We are not into wagging our fingers, scolding people, um, you know, it, it, because it's not particularly effective and it does not build good relationships. We're building that as fast as we can, but you have to understand, I mean, normally programs like this, you have six months, a year, whatever, you know, to design it, right? And especially for things that have pricklier problems, you know, complex issues like homelessness, education, and so on. I mean, if we could have solved it, we have solved it a long time ago, right? So. However, we're under time pressure. Uh, it makes no sense for us to wait six months to develop this program. So, you know, what we needed to know was that we could actually deliver on it. And if we didn't have the money to do it, there's no way we're going to deliver on it. So I, I'm very pleased that, you know, Dr. Ken Farmer, um, County Executive Bruce Danmeyer were very supportive of this program. Um, and even though we didn't have all the details worked out, the county has approved the funding for us to do a program like this. There is no um, playbook um, or nationally accepted playbook on what we're planning to do. Uh, we know that New York and some other places have done this, uh, and there's conversations statewide about trying to do something like this. Um, people need to understand we, we are developing a pilot for this, but we feel there's an urgent need to do this. And so we're, we're going to try and move as fast as we can on it.